Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be guiding you through the admin page of the Audit Safe software where you can configure the various parameters of the software, the secure folder, and where you can create users and access project logs. The newest 21 CFR and GMP compliance software from Total Lab, Audit Safe. Now, Audit Safe is not just another 21 CFR compliant version of an existing piece of software, it is a 21 CFR and GMP compliant platform. Now, we have designed it to wrap around our existing software, our existing 1D and 2D analysis software, but also be completely flexible and extendable to different pieces of equipment, legacy pieces of software. You know, we could theoretically bring in and make a version of Microsoft Excel compliant by bringing it into the AuditSafe platform. We could bring in uh, existing pieces of equipment that maybe are legacy and, and have never been made in, in a compliant manner. We can bring in pieces of equipment and software from other manufacturers that want to partner with us and using the audit safe structure make things compliant that previously were never able to be made compliant so that's the power of the audit safe software now you'll see as i go down i've got lots of different settings to configure here so if you've used the 21 cfr or gmp compliant software from total lab before you'll be familiar of the client server approach that we typically take. Now, the audit safe is no different. If it isn't broke, don't fix it. What we're looking at here is the server component. Once you've installed the server, you can have as many clients as you want running the, the actual analysis software. They all connect to the same server, and that server is all administered from this uh, URL, from, the, from this browser, which is massively helpful for IT professionals when they want to set up and create new users and gives them a lot of power to be able to do that and another great advantage is centralization of all of your audit trails for all of your projects they can be downloaded as one big package by auditors and I'll speak about that in a second when I go through the log section so say if you are an IT professional you've installed our software on site you have a hundred computers that all need the client app to be able to perform analysis in a compliant manner. They would connect to this URL here, localhost, and they would be able to simply download the client app straight from the server software. They wouldn't need to connect to the internet. So if you've got an offline site, they would be able to do this from the software being installed already. And then they would simply connect to the server's URL to gain access to the secure folder where all of the projects are held. Now what we also provide to users is a certain number of walkthroughs and guides as to using the software, which again will kind of be a text version of this video, I guess. So the first option we've got on the left hand side here, once we've logged into kind of the configuration, the admin side of the software, is logs. Now as I touched upon previously, logs are can be centralized. So at the top here, we've got our system logs, which is everything that is done within this tool, this server tool, where we configure our users and our secure folder and our permissions and everything like that. But we also have a project, our project event logs. So this is the typical audit trail for all of your analysis projects, all of your data. Now, all of this can be zipped up and downloaded as one giant PDF report. And what you can do if you were being audited by the FDA, and you have the order to come in and you had 100 computers and they all had a piece of 21 CFR compliant software on and the auditor needs to see the audit trails from all of the outputs of those computers. Would you have to go along and say, well, you have to go to all 100 of these computers because all of the audit trails are on each single computer? That's going to take a huge amount of time. What you can do as kind of the, the head of QA or, or the IT professional site is just create a new user profile for the auditor to be able to log into AuditSafe to, that only has access to this log section so they can download all of the data that they need centrally rather than having to go to a million different computers to try and get the audit trails that they need. So that's incredibly powerful to be able to have all of your audit trails centralized like this. Next we've got the general settings that make up how AuditSafe functions. Now the secure folder location the secure folder is where all of your projects are stored when they're not being actively worked on. It's an immu They're stored immutably um, because whenever a user analyzes the project, they only ever take a copy of a project. They don't take the original. 
and then when they're finished with their analysis they can then push their copy their analyzed copy up to the secure folder and that get that gets added as another revision of the project but nothing is ever deleted or overwritten to make sure that we continue to comply with 21 CFR GAMP5 regulations etc this secure folder can be a local file or it can be a, a file folder based on a server or a VM um, we don't lock that down in any way so if you are an industry customer you will typically have your secure folder on a server which is then regularly backed up to make sure that you are at minimal risk of data loss should anything happen to your site if you're using now we do support windows active directory users and if you're using windows active directory users your windows password will be managed by windows and we don't have any control over that if you're using uh, internal audit safe users this is where we can define a number of parameters to ensure the security of users passwords we've got we can ensure mixed case non alphanumeric symbols prevent users from reusing passwords we can enforce a password expiry after a certain number of days minimum length lock accounts after a certain amount number of failed logins etc um, all of those kind of industry standard security measures based around passwords that we're all aware of when we create accounts online we have the ability to um, force a logout if a if someone walks away from their computer for example so after a certain number of minutes of inactivity the user is automatically logged out and this applies to both the admin tool this server tool here that i'm accessing and the client um, so this is again just another security measure to make sure that say a user walks away from their computer uh, and they're still logged in there is the potential that another analyst could come along and start doing work and it would be attributed to the first user that was logged in thus corrupting the audit trail for that particular project so the ability to have an auto logout goes some way to minimize that risk we've got the ability to add mandatory notes at different sections of your analysis and you'll see that as i go through the client guide um, notes are extremely useful to add data alongside a project that you might want to look back on say if you had the report in 10 years time you might want to go back and see what antibody batch number was used um, where where the samples came from something like that so you can enforce notes and a really good idea for a really good use case for mandatory notes is during the sign up procedure so if you have mandatory notes on during sign off you can be sure you can be sure that the person based on the notes that they've added you can be sure that the person performing the sign off has actually looked at the project um, because the notes that they add to that project will be relevant to the data that has been signed off for example you know we, we saw a very strong band at a molecular weight of 250 kilodaltons, something like that something that is relevant to the project so QC sign off is kind of a specialized version of a sign off which is you know QC mode which enforces users once they bring data into the audit safe system they can't analyze that data until someone with the quality control permissions has signed off that data so as basically said this data is of good enough quality that I would trust any analysis that is done as, de as a derivative of this data so it can enforce a certain level of um, quality control before any analysis is performed and minimize any wasted time performing analysis which may take a long time on data which can, is considered poor quality so again it's super useful for QC labs and in techniques whereby quality could be extremely variable in terms of data the LDAP configuration is where you would set your Windows Active Directory configuration now I'm not part of a Active Directory on this computer for this demonstration so I'm not going to be able to I'm not going to go into that I'm not going to be able to set that and then but yeah we do support Windows Active Directory user authorization and this is where you would set that database is where the database is held that contains all of the users all of their permission and keeps track of all of that information uh, again this is more of a, an admin setting ideally this page should only be accessed by admins 
typically your IT professional that's going to be administering the, the software, not your everyday analyst users. Speaking of which, here is where you would create your users. So users, we, we have two different sections here. We have users and we have groups. Now, groups are, you can set your own groups and Auditive comes with a set of predefined user groups. But basically, if you, you create a user, you can create an internal or an LDAP user here, give them a username and then you can assign them to a group. Now, groups have inherent permissions. And the idea is that, say, on a large scale industrial site, you would have 100 analysts and they all need the same permission. You would have above them 10 senior analysts and they would have a different set of permissions and different level of permissions, reflective of their advanced experience on site. Above them, you would have other people. So you can, you can define groups and the level of permissions within groups completely manually if you wish and then assign users to those groups so that they automatically get that level of permission. And it allows you to infer that if someone is an analyst, you would know what permissions they already have. So user creation, you would add a new user, give them a username, say demo one, and you would tick which group you want them to be a member of. Now, users can be members of multiple different groups. Um, and they can also be, of course, members of custom groups that you've created. Now, if you want to create your own groups with your own custom level of permissions, rather than these permissions that are part of the, the default that are built into AuditSafe, if you click new group here, you can give it a username, demo one, okay. And then if I come down to my demo one group, I can define what permissions apply to people to users that are part of that group so you've got the option of using our built-in ones so admins supervisors analysts readers editors or you can create your own and it's a much quicker way if you've used our older total lab gxp module software this has been a very much uh, sought after feature the ability to create users and just to be able to throw them into groups rather than having to set up each user individually with their own permissions every time becomes especially burdensome if you've got a very large site uh, that you're trying to administer and lots of different users all using the software. Sessions is a, a way of displaying all of the users that you've currently got connected to the AuditSafe software that are currently performing an analysis. It will tell you the machine ID, the IP, what username's logged in, what operating system they're using, what machine name they're using, and kind of the, the time and date when their login expires. Now, if you are, I'm not logged in as a super admin here, but if you're using the super admin account, you can terminate someone's session remotely. So if you suspect that someone's account has been compromised, um, you can terminate their session, or if you need, if someone needs access to a project that is currently being used um, as a matter of urgency, you can cancel someone else's session and then log into someone else and access that project, etc. So you can centrally manage everyone, all the users that are connected to the software, all through this browser, all, all centrally. Project is very similar to sessions, but at the project level, you can see all of the projects that are actively checked out and we cancel those checkouts and get details of those projects. You can see all the users that are currently working on different projects and I don't have any log locked projects, but if I wanted to, I could see all of my locked projects. So you can get a kind of bird's eye view on all of the data that is within, within the system um, through the projects tab here, through the URL, through the browser that you're centrally managing the AuditSafe software with. Manage, the Manage tab is where you perform your server management, where you would perform your license management and it gives you a breakdown of all of the users and all of the permissions that those users have within the system. And the verify tab is where you would perform file authentication um, to prove the to prove that a file has not been entered once it has been left the system. Now this file authorization, this file validation system we're really proud of. So Say, for example, if I had finished my analysis and I exported my report as a PDF, 
that PDF then leaves the audit safe regulated system as the final report. However, PDFs are difficult to edit, but not impossible to edit. So if a PDF was exported from the system and then I wanted to be nefarious and edit that PDF to say what I wanted it to say and then form part of an FDA submission for a new advanced therapeutic with that edited PDF, the auditor would actually be able to come back with that PDF and upload it to the software and say, basically, is this PDF the same PDF that was exported from the audit safe system? Is this the same PDF or has it been edited outside the system? And it doesn't have to be a PDF, it can be an image, it can be a document, it can be anything, but basically they can upload it here and it will check if that file matches the file that is in the system. And it will either say, yes it is, or no it's not. Uh, another use case could be, again, for uh, validating your data. If the FDA came back and said, we're not sure on this file that you've given us, we're not sure on the validity of this data, you can upload the file here and say, well, look, this is this has come out of, uh, this is the file that matches the audit trail that we've given you. Here is the, the verification that we performed within the software to say that this is the report that came out. Um, so it's very powerful to prove the, the legacy of where all of your files have come from, all of your data has come from, all of your analysis has come from once it's finalized and leaving the system, once your analysis is complete. Um, so it's a really rigorous way of validating your reports when they come out. So that's the admin tool. This is how you would define all of the settings or the configuration of the AuditSafe software. I'm gonna end the video here and I'm gonna do the client video separately just so we don't end up with one huge video and we can have two separate videos. So this video might be more for the admin or the, the QA manager that is setting the software up on site, whereas the client video would be more user facing and not contain this level of information that they may not need to know. As ever, thanks for watching. And if you'd be interested in trialing out a copy of the AuditSafe 21 CFR GMP compliance software, or you've got any advanced 21 CFR or GMP compliant needs, please check out the links in the description below.